We are the leaders, the visionaries, the doers, the hope givers, the game changers, the world changers. We are pioneers of a new era, explorers of an ever-evolving frontier, trailblazers of tomorrow. We are knowledge seekers, laboratory phenoms, classroom heroes. With the support of our partners, we are the heart of a culture, the soul of a community, and the embodiment of a healthy Nevada. We are the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. Our future is bright. Our future is alive. Our future is now. How can you watch this video and not be proud of this School of Medicine? This is an extraordinary event, an extraordinary video. I love the video because it's about you, and I'm proud to be working with you at this great School of Medicine. The video is also about the future. Our future is bright, our future is exciting, and our future is now. The video, the redesigned fact sheet, the reel of Department of Achievements that I hope you watched as you came in, our new venue, the scoreboard, the banner, all the details that have gone into make this event so great are due to the great work of our advancement and engagement team led by Julie Ardito. I would like Julie and the A&E team to stand so you can thank them for all the great work that they did here. My thanks also to uh, Nevada Wolfpack Athletics for making this exceptional venue uh, available. I think it's a stunning place to uh, start this new phase of our medical school. So welcome to the School of Medicine State of the School Address. I'm thrilled and humbled to see how many of you uh, have turned out for this uh, event. To our faculty, our staff, our students, alumni, donors, campus colleagues, community partners, community faculty members, uh, and community leaders, to all of you who are watching online tonight, and I know there are several Thank you for being with us here tonight. We're also joined by some distinguished guests. I'd like to recognize them at this point from the Nevada System of Higher Education, uh, Regent Dr. Mark Dubrava, class of 1989. <laughs> Regent Carol Del Carlo. <laughs> Regent Kathy McAdoo. University of Nevada, Reno School of Medicine Alumni Association Vice President and Class of 1976, Dr. Joe Holland. <laughs> Executive Director of the Washoe County Medical Society, Mary Ann McCauley. <laughs> From Renowned Health, CEO and President, Dr. Tony Slonim. And right next to him, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Cy Johnson. And I want to thank all of you uh, who are here tonight. Each of you contributes in some way to the school's mission. And this is the one chance I have every year to thank all of you for what you do. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Tonight's event is different uh, than those in the past because we are different. Over the course of the year, we hear about accomplishments, bits and pieces, a note here in Nevada Medicine Weekly, a story in Synapse. But when you take the time to read these achievements all together, it's truly awe-inspiring, and that's what we're going to celebrate tonight. Fans of Ferris Bueller's Day Off may remember the famous Matthew Broderick quote, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. We're not taking off in a car, that's okay. Those of you who remember that scene. Our life at UNR Med moves pretty fast. Tonight is our opportunity to stop, look around, and make sure we don't miss the phenomenal events and achievements that took place over the past year. We have so much of which to be proud. 
We continue to be one of the most affordable medical schools in the nation, 13th most affordable in a recent survey. We have expanded residency programs, created new clinical departments, recruited hundreds of new clinical community faculty members, welcomed several new outstanding biomedical scientists to the faculty, engaged with the community in so many areas of service, and transformed our clinical practices. We've spent much of the past year holding important strategic discussions about the direction of UNR Med. Those discussions start with you and who you are and who we are. So, who are we? The elevator speech goes something like this. We are the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine, a community-based, thank you, <laughs> a community-based medical school with a mission of excellence in education, research, and service committed to a culture of diversity and inclusion. But can't other medical schools say essentially, if not exactly, the same thing? We've asked ourselves that very question during our rigorous strategic planning process, to which we have received a wealth of data-driven answers, and you will hear a bit about that tonight. But the bottom line is, we are special. We have special responsibilities, and the way we serve the state is special. We boast nearly 50 years of tradition and history, yet we're an innovative, competitive, questioning academic institution. We're small enough to search the UNR Med email directory by first name, yet we're growing, adding new faculty members, developing new leaders, and creating new partnerships and programs from our Master's in Physician Assistant Studies program to new departments in obstetrics, gynecology, and surgery. We're not about staying small for the sake of staying small or growing for the sake of growing, but we focus on excellence, we focus on quality, and we focus on the opportunities to become more complex and more diverse. We're cohesive and we leverage our resources for the best possible outcomes, especially now that we have an integrated Northern Nevada campus. As an example, we brought communications, marketing, creative design and events under the umbrella of advancement and engagement to better connect with our internal community and our external constituents. Alumni, donors, partners, and patients all benefit from this integration. We think this is a strategic improvement that may be unique in the country. We are Northern Nevada based, but statewide focused. Our third and fourth year medical students have new and exciting opportunities in Reno for their clerkships and electives, but they still benefit from the tremendous legacy of teaching in Las Vegas. We offer hands-on experience at the Student Outreach Clinic. Our first and second year students now receive priceless mentoring as they work side by side with those third and fourth year students now in Reno. We boast a state-of-the-art anatomy laboratory, one of the best in the nation, and state-of-the-art instructors to go with it. At the end of each school year, our first year students plan a memorial for the donors and for their families. These donors are our students' first patients. To thank the families for the lessons learned that go far beyond anatomy, lessons that can't be replaced by computer technology. This school sits at a unique crossroads of community engagement and research excellence. We are perhaps the most research intensive of the community-based schools and the most community-based of the research intensive schools. One of the key issues that has come up repeatedly in these strategic planning discussions is money. Not surprising. Financial transparency is an issue, fiscal responsibility is an issue, long-term sustainability is an issue. To ensure the future of the medical school, we must make sound and responsible financial decisions. The choices we make today have a direct impact on the choices we are able to make in the future, even decades from now. As the saying commonly goes, we can do anything we want, we just can't do everything we want. Much effort has gone into reorganizing our administrative structure to integrate both academic and clinical missions. We are enhancing our infrastructure in Reno with new expert staff in finance, human resources, faculty compensation, facilities, research administration, information technology, and clinical operations, all under the lead of Jeremy Altop, our new uh, assistant, uh, sorry, senior associate dean of administration and finance. With input from many of you, guided by our strategic plan, and under Jeremy's leadership, we've undertaken a comprehensive financial analysis 
It's led to closer alignments of types and sources of funding with expenses. The financial progress we've made in the past year has come with some level of sacrifice from each of you, and I understand that and appreciate your um, commitment to, to these changes. And challenges still remain, but the process has been invaluable in ensuring our financial health. Many of you have asked about the debt from our statewide practice plan. We knew the debt would grow during the last fiscal year, but we ended up doing far better than expected. Rather than beginning our new era with what we projected to be a $13 million or more debt, I reported to the Board of Regents last week our debt of slightly under $10 million. This is a huge accomplishment and, and, and cannot be uh, overestimated in its importance. We can manage this debt to the university while continuing to invest uh, in our future, and I want to make sure you hear that point clearly, that we have the capacity to continue to invest and continue to grow. We will have a very detailed plan to present to the Regents in December. Thanks to support from new donors, expanded support from longtime donors, and a solid partnership with development and alumni relations, we've expanded scholarships to cover over 40% of our students' tuition burden, up from 35% the prior year. This is a remarkable level of support that often goes unappreciated. It exceeds that of many, perhaps most, medical schools. It's part of the reason why USA Today ranked us as the 13th most affordable school in the country. Our endowments, designed to support medical student scholarships and faculty teaching and research, are currently valued at uh, nearly $43 million. The investment income from this endowment is precious when it comes to recruiting and supporting best-in-class students and colleagues. Space also plays a major role in recruitment. Through the support of the Nevada State Legislature and private donors, we occupy teaching facilities, research labs, and technological infrastructure valued at over $300 million. Impressive? Absolutely. Is it enough? No. We will work with the university to develop plans for new research, spa new research space and infrastructure, both clinical and biomedical, including the possibility of off-campus space and partnerships with renowned health. I am particularly excited about having this problem, problem of ensuring adequate space while we're growing. That is a good problem to have. We continue to enjoy strong, in fact, expanded support from the governor and the uh, legislature for our core academic programs. Last fiscal year, we expended over $37 million in state funds to support teaching and research. Our total economic contribution was over $153 million including employment of nearly 1,200 Nevadans. That is a four to one return on investment for the state, surely one of the best investments the state could make. Our measure of current success and future aspirations is continued accreditation. As Dr. Tim Baker has succinctly noted, as only Dr. Baker can, nothing is more important than accreditation. We recently completed a mock site visit to prepare us for the official visit from the Liaison Committee on Medical Education, the LCME, in late October. In my opening remarks to the mock site visit team, I made the point that there could not have been a better time for this accreditation cycle. The self-study gave us a structured, rigorous, robust approach to describing our transformation and answering the questions of who we are, where we are, and why we are. It is a complex but exciting transformation to describe. The LCME process has been intense, to say the least, especially by those who have led it. And I'd like to recognize that leadership of Dr. Melissa Piasecki, the Executive Associate Dean, Dr. Crystal Oates, Accreditation Coordinator, and Dr. Amy Smith, Director of the Office of Continuous Institutional Assessment, who I believe is watching uh, at home online. Melissa and Crystal? Our sustainability is not all about money. Our history of success predicts a future of success rooted in our passion, our excellence, and our commitment. This is why the state will continue to fund us, why we continue to recruit outstanding students, faculty, and investigators, why our donors continue to support us, and why I am confident in our future. But what does that success look like? 
Or more accurately, who does that success look like? Success is all about people. Our greatest asset is all of you. Our cl clinical community faculty members, scientists, investigators, students, hospital partners, alumni, donors, faculty, and staff, which is why the video is all about you. When it comes to student success, for example, our clinical faculty members are critical. These generous individuals invite our learners into their practice. They don't do it for money or recognition, although they don't turn it down. They do it because someone did it for them. They share their expertise and experience, providing our medical students a realistic view of medical practice. They are paying it back as well as paying it forward. They were taught, and in return, they teach. The lofty goal in our strategic plan was to increase these, the number of these dedicated community faculty members from 630 to 775. Uh, we missed that by a little bit. We recruited 1,000 clinical faculty members total who are committed to this institution and making a difference in the lives of our learners. Our clinical community faculty members are great examples of the partnerships we've developed in Northern Nevada. Our hospital partners are another. While medical school may begin in the classroom, it ends in the clinic and in the hospital. It is thanks to our hospital partners that I can proudly talk about students completing all of, the third year, all of their third year clerkships in Northern Nevada. Neurology, internal medicine, family medicine, psych, peds, and now obstetrics, gynecology, and surgery. The last two departments are closely linked with renowned health, the Sierra Nevada VA Health Center, Carson Tahoe, Tahoe Hospital, and other community health partners. This is a good time for me to acknowledge and personally thank Dr. Tony Slonim, Dr. Doug Merrill, and Mr. Cy Johnson for all they do from Renowned Health to make our critical partnership so successful. Uh, Dr. Slonim and Mr. Johnson are here, as you know. Please thank them again. It takes committed leaders to get new clerkships up and running. I would like to highlight the contributions of one of those key players who is with us this evening, Dr. Jim Harris, who is the Surgery Clerkship Director. Dr. Harris's contributions have brought the new Northern Nevada Surgery Clerkship into existence, but not just to exist, to thrive. His leadership in building this program is having a powerful, positive impact on our clerkship students. His hard work has set the stage for a new full Department of Surgery in partnership with the VA, with new clinical and didactic teaching programs, suture and simulation labs, career advising, and more. Dr. Harris is with us tonight. Dr. Harris, please stand so we can acknowledge and thank you. We are well along in exploring uh, roles that Dr. Harris and Dr. Laurie Rostin, the Chief of Surgery at the VA, will take in leading this new Department of Surgery. So this is a good place for me uh, to recognize the leadership at the VA, Lisa Howard, who's the executive director of the VA, and Dr. Rostin herself, who could not be with us uh, tonight. Uh, it's important that you know how critical this partnership is and how much this commitment has meant to me personally and to uh, the school. Equally exciting is the tremendous progress we are making with the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Thanks to funding from the state of, Nevada, state of Nevada, the leadership of interim chair and School of Medicine alumna, Dr. Netta Edizadiamoli, and of course, our primary clinical partner, Renowned Health. The state's growth compels us to explore um, new ways to support that growth. Part of that support will come from keeping our medical students in state. Students who attend our medical school have a 40% likelihood of ending up here in practice. Students from out of state who come here for residency training have a 60% chance of staying. But if a student comes here, uh, stays from medical school into residency training uh, in Nevada, they have an 80% chance of staying after that. Of all the physicians practicing in Northern Nevada, nearly a quarter are UNM, UNR uh, medical alumni. As we work with our hospital partners to increase residency opportunities, our goal is to increase the percentage of alumni who practice in Northern Nevada. This formula begins with recruiting the best and brightest to come to UNR Med. One great example among the impressive class of 2021 is Anita Savell. When Anita graduated with her electrical engineering degree, she was awarded the HERS Gold Medal. 
The Hearst Gold Medal is awarded to the University of Nevada, Reno undergraduate with the highest overall grade point average. So why did Anita decide to stay here for medical school? As an undergraduate, she was encouraged to take advantage of everything the university had to offer, opportunities to volunteer, to be mentored, and to participate in research. Anita worked with School of Medicine investigators and researchers to write a successful grant application to the American Heart Association. Anita told us that, quote, seeing the medical school faculty and staff invest in students firsthand, even an electrical engineering graduate, made me confident that UNR Med was a medical school where I could be both happy and successful. She received acceptances and scholarship offers from other medical schools, but our dedication and excellence to our, and dedication to our students influenced her to enroll here. Anita, please stand and be recognized. Let's talk about graduate medical education a bit. Through our relationships with Renown Health and the VA, we have over 100 residents and fellows in our GME programs. They come to Northern Nevada to train in family medicine, internal medicine, and psych and behavioral sciences, and to pursue fellowship training in child and adolescent psych, geriatric medicine, hospice and palliative care, and primary care sports medicine. Over a third of the UNR Med class of 2017 chose to stay in Nevada to train. While we are proud of the students who have the opportunity to leave Reno for outstanding out-of-state residency training, we are absolutely thrilled when the right residency opportunity keeps a graduate in Nevada. Joining a residency in Northern Nevada turned out to be the right match for Sarah Robertson. After graduating from UNR Med in May, Dr. Robertson began her internal medicine residency training at Renown Health. In her words, I always knew I wanted to practice as a physician in Reno, so I made, it made the most sense to receive my medical education from the community in which I wanted to work. During my rotations as a medical student, I really enjoyed working with the UNR Med faculty and residents as well as our community's patients. My family and friends live in Reno, and it means a lot to me to stay here to practice and, and learn medicine. Dr. Robertson is another example of recruiting the best and brightest. One way we continue to attract top students is through donor support. Dr. Robertson was a recipient of a Pennington Foundation scholarship. Retaining promising young physicians to practice in the community is part of the Pennington Foundation's long-standing tradition for support of education and health care. Dr. Robertson has joined us this evening, and I invite her to stand and be recognized by you as well. A critical role and responsibility for UNR Med is to support our rural partners and campuses. We offer learners like Dr. Robertson a unique educational opportunity to learn from and contribute to our rural community's health care needs. I've heard from many medical students and residents that our rural rotations had a direct impact on their choice to come here. We are leading the expansion of rural physician and healthcare workforce development. In 2016, our Office of Statewide Initiatives, led by Dr. Evan Klass, assisted in the recruitment of 16 healthcare providers to the Nevada Health Centers out of 24 total. Working with the Nevada Health Service Corps, we have recruited and placed 158 healthcare professionals throughout our rural communities since 1989. One great example of how we are helping rural communities is in Elko, a medical service area of about 100,000. Much of Elko's healthcare is provided by the Northeastern Nevada Regional Hospital and by the Elko Clinic. UNR Med residents rotate at both the hospital and the clinic. They learn patient care in a rural setting with limited resources and specialist availability, leading to higher than usual levels of responsibility and independence. But they learn from seasoned clinicians who enjoy the opportunity to mentor and to teach. I had the opportunity last week to actually meet and thank many of these clinical faculty members, and they are extraordinary. Their dedication is fabulous. Our residents explore the beautiful country around Elko and become a part of the community. A number of graduates over the years have enjoyed the experience so much that they are working in Elko on a permanent basis. One such resident is Dr. Tanzil Islam. Dr. Islam had a number of rural training experiences in Pakistan. In Nevada, he immediately jumped on the opportunity to train in Elko. He enjoyed his experience so much that he decided to work full-time as a hospitalist in Elko and is about to become a permanent part of the medical community. There's no better example of the power of our training programs to serve the state. 
Dr. Islam was unable to join us this evening, but should you see him, please thank him for his contributions to Elko's healthcare. Anita, Dr. Robertson, Dr. Islam, and all of our students, residents, and fellows represent the future of UNR Med and the quality of healthcare in Northern Nevada. They are our ambassadors and are the way much of the state knows the quality of the School of Medicine. To continue to attract this caliber of learners requires exceptional education and world-class research. Our biomedical scientists are some of the most heavily funded in the country. Our scientists have generated over $235 million in research funding over the past de uh, decade, supporting research that is enhancing the quality of life both locally and globally and fueling the economy. This research has attracted private investment and generated two Reno-based startup companies. Our biomedical scientists are interna internationally recognized in the fields of infectious disease, reproductive endocrinology, muscular dystrophy, gastrointestinal disease, cardiac physiology, neurosciences, and much more. We've been particularly successful this year in recruiting another outstanding group of early and mid-career scientists who discovered the personal and professional satisfactions of living in Reno and working at the School of Medicine. Among the new investigators in the Department of Pharmacology are Drs. Peter and Takako Jones, a husband and wife team who are international experts on fascio-scapulohumeral dystrophy, SFHD, FSHD. Dr. Peter Jones has been appointed to the Mick Hitchcock PhD Endowed Chair in Medical Biochemistry, an extraordinary honor. Peter and Takako have joined forces with Dr. Dean Birkin and his team of muscular dystrophy experts to explore new treatments for the various muscular dystrophies, some of which will come to clinical trials soon and will be attractive to the pharmaceutical industry. Three new faculty members in microbiology and immunology, Dr. Ciprian Rosetto, Paul Brett, and Mary Burtnick are bringing substantial grant funding to study viral and bacterial pathogenesis, develop new diagnostic tests, and new approaches to vaccines with the potential to save thousands of lives. Other grants in microbiology and immunology are supporting research on the Zika virus, led by Dr. Verma, the Ebola virus, led by Dr. O'Coin, Drs. Tom Kozell and Amanda burnham Marusic are developing a point of care test for whooping cough. And then there's physiology and cell biology, one of the top ranked departments and scientific teams in the country. Dr. Kent Sanders and his team have secured NIH funding that ranks them fourth, I repeat fourth, in the nation for NIH funding. A remarkable achievement ahead of schools like UCSF, Penn, Hopkins, Yale, and UCLA. Dr. Sanders himself is ranked eighth in the U.S. for research funding amongst academic investigators in physiology. We are fortunate to boast a facilitative and collaborative research environment, an environment in which undergraduate, graduate, and medical students and postdoctoral fellows thrive. One example of such a student is Anita Savell, whom you have already met. The postdoc fellow who assisted Anita with her successful grant application is Dr. Paolo Pires. Here you see a, a picture of Dr. Pires hard at work at his lab. No. <laughs> Dr. Perez is an outstanding young investigator in Dr. Scott, Scott Early's lab. His groundbreaking research investigates the role of ion channels and cell surface receptors in the regulation of cerebral blood flow and neurovascular coupling. These discoveries may one day lead to the development of new therapies to treat ischemic stroke and vascular cognitive impairment. Paolo has received numerous national and international awards for his research and has published several important papers in prominent journals, including the Journal of Physiology. Uh, Dr. Pierce is with us this evening. Please congratulate him for his achievements. <laughs> Science is a team sport. Here's a question that the most productive and outstanding organizations ask. If you had to solve a complex problem and your life depended on finding a solution, would you want to be in a room with people exactly like you or with people different from you? After decades of research, we've learned that groups with the diversity of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, and more are more innovative than homogeneous groups, better at solving complex, non-routine problems. People with diverse backgrounds bring new information. Working with individuals from different backgrounds with different life experiences forces us to be better prepared, to be comfortable with alternate viewpoints, to, and to anticipate that reaching a decision may take more effort, but the outcome will be worth it. 
I've spoken tonight about education, research, and service, each a component of our mission. And the fourth component, where I will end, is a commitment to an institutional culture of diversity and inclusion. In May, we named Dr. Nicole Jacobs to the new position of Associate Dean of Diversity and Inclusion. Dr. Jacobs and her team are creating initiatives, policies, and programming to promote a more diverse and inclusive climate at UNR Med, a climate that will enhance the working environment for all. Dr. Will Torres, Assistant Dean of Admissions, Outreach, and Inclusion, is working with Dr. Sheree Singer in Student Affairs to increase the diversity of our medical students. Two-thirds of our incoming class this year speak two or more languages. One-third are first-generation students. And for the first time in a long time, possibly forever, women outnumber men in the entering class. Working with the Office of Recruitment and the Office for Faculty Development, we've launched an important program of implicit bias training to facilitate the recruitment and retention of diverse faculty in our mission-based diversity groups, African American, Latino, rural, women, and first generation or educationally underserved students and faculty. This work is particularly exciting because much of it is being adopted by the wider university. The Office of Diversity and Inclusion started Diversity Dialogues, a monthly discussion forum in which everyone at UNR Med can communicate, be heard, and engage with the complex landscape of diversity and inclusion. Diversity Dialogues are held over the lunch hour and are open to all faculty, staff, residents, and students. In addition, there are opportunities for faculty and staff to get involved with our diversity-based student interest groups. There are many ways to contribute to the culture and climate of UNR Med. I would encourage all of you to get involved in these opportunities. You've heard just a handful of stories tonight, but there are so many of you doing so many extraordinary things and making a difference at the School of Medicine. And that's why our future is now, here, with all of you. We're a complex living organism made of faculty and staff members, students, community faculty members and leaders, hospital partners, alumni, and donors. With each student we recruit, each class that graduates, each new community faculty member who joins us, each new partnership negotiated. With each paper that's published, each grant that's funded, each new discovery made, with each patient who benefits from our care, each family who is supported and consoled, we're getting better all the time. It can be easy to get us, for us to get distracted with metrics, graphs, and surveys, with spreadsheets and balance sheets, all of which are important, none of which tell a story. Working together, engaging with each other, and meeting our mission and vision, that's what's important. That's where we find the stories that describe who we are, our successes, our achievements, our contributions. Who we are is the cumulative impact of what all of you do every day. During next year's State of the School, we will be a few months into our 50th anniversary celebration. I look forward to commemorating 50 years of excellence, 50 years of success, and 50 years of tradition with you. You are UNR Med. Together, we make UNR Med the exceptional school that it is. Thank you all for coming together tonight to celebrate our extraordinary year.